So, MySQL troubleshooting and uh, performance analysis. Uh, that's, uh, that's a very broad topic. Yes. Very broad topic. And, and, and there are a lot of very, very interesting tools and opinions on the internet, right? Especially Stack Overflow. Yes. That's actually a lot of time we do Google, right? Yeah. And then the first one actually is that overthrow. Right. Exactly. <laughs> what, what is it? It's that overthrow. <laughs> it's like a forum. Yes. Well. Well. You know, we say that we uh, that, that I uh, that we are looking for full stack overflow <laughs> developers, right? That's correct. <laughs> okay. So, is is there any uh, uh, definitive resources that we can uh, that we can uh, uh, look or read to really really uh, come to like get a grip of uh, um, uh, of like Microsoft. Uh, sorry, my SQL uh, uh, performance analysis. That's what I'm going to talk about, and uh, I will share some of the resources, which is one of those actually uh, in my talk is uh, Dimitri. Okay. So Dimitri is a person, but it's also a website. Oh, very exciting. Thank you. Well, uh, let's give a round of applause for Ivan, and we're looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thanks, Masters. And uh, one of the things that uh, I want to get your attention is, there is one thing, okay, do you like to play games? Do you like to play games? Love games. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So i like to share this game to you. This one. So, do you know what the game is? Sudoku. So, can you, do you know what's the number at the three? After five, three is what? Easy. Is it? This should be easy. Either it's one, two, four, six, eight, nine, right? <laughs> it has to be. <laughs> so, can you, do you consider, actually in SQL, how to run this? So data is very important. Process the data is also very important. To process the data, how can you solve a problem? This is what we today's, every day's our life. Am I correct? So this is the problem solving questions. So how do we actually do this? So the problem is here and the solution is here. SQL. So, this is what it is. It's a common table expression, but with recursive way of doing things. So, here, that you do, uh, in here we have the problem, my problem, which is the, here, my problem. And as the input, with how many digits? The digit is uh, 81 digits, right? So, it's actually my problem, 5, 3, dot, dot, bum, 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 right? They are the digits, and it is the problem. So the problem can be solved in here. So do you have the computer? Have you installed my SQL 8? Type it. <laughs> Just joking. Uh, anyway, yeah, you can find my, actually, my slide and actually my blog as well. And putting this actually on blog and you can find it. Okay, you can just put it as text and copy and paste. So my problem and then this run will give you the answer. Am I serious? Look at this. This is the problem of that map. It runs, and this is this SQL statement in just 0 0.03. The answer is 8492, blah, 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 blah. You see? All this actually is coming quickly. So I'm just actually in here to show we are here, everybody creating applications to solve problems. So either you do it this, or you do it your own way. But we want some easy and handy way of solving problem. So my SQL, SQL can do this. Have you ever considered this is actually very powerful? And what we solve problem is to solve some sort of data problem in many cases, because we have data we need to solve. Without the data, you know problem to solve. Consider no input, no output. So that's the way the data is actually being stored somewhere, and then we need to process. So this is so close to the, to the box, which the data sit onto it. 
So this is just, uh, I put it aside, another, f my favorite game. And the topic is not Sudoku. <laughs> Sorry for this. So this is in fact uh, our topic. So let's share our main topic for today. So troubleshooting, like uh, I want to share some uh, good stuff, which is we can use, okay, in our daily, if you are doing the daily activity with database, particularly in here my SQL. But in fact, troubleshooting and live performance tuning is not just database. This can also be applied to anything else. So uh, do you remember what we have talked about the last three sections? The first one, the very basic, like DBA and also our commercial and com uh, community. And my session with the DB cluster and also the trend with low SQL. And this is like all set already. And we actually, we touched the system is getting growing and growing. We need to be more performance or stable. So we need to look at those. Okay, so they are. So as troubleshooting, where we look at informations, the information likely on the screen, something happened or complaint or the log files. Am I correct? The log files. Okay, we likely we see issues. Okay, complaint, and then the system is very slow, and then we may look at the monitoring. Okay, whatever it is, something will report to you. CPU is getting slow, memory is not enough, okay? Something, whatever we just put a code, monitor. So when there's an issue, okay, we have to, what, the first, somebody will tell, ah, oh, shut it down and we boot the system. Is it sometimes, right? Sometimes or every, every day? Okay, we boot. Okay, things happening, we boot. <laughs> okay, we cover first. We cover first, we boot, okay? So, as like another alternative, people will look at redundancy. Instead of we boot this, we have to put redundancy so that the servers can actually be run on this another redundant server and you can look at this problem server. Problem, if you don't have the redundancy, you cannot touch this like the problem server because we need to offer the servers Right? immediately after the failure. So we need redundancy, so HA is so important. So after this, then we can take a look and then we do like root class analysis and then troubleshoot, right? So this is kind of, okay, yeah, we need to do this. We may look at some other tools. In my SQL, we look at the locks. So the locks, maybe we have to look at where the lock file is. So there is somewhere we put the log file. The variable name, log errors, pointing to the files that we put it in. And there is a slow query logs, which it actually it points out the SQL statement which run for a, a while, which is greater than the long query variables. And there is also a general log file, which points to a file which any SQL statement it runs, it will just write to this log file we, we, if we turn this on, general logs. And we may look at the application log, your application, Java, PHP. So they are also the information that captures why there is errors, why there is problem. We may look at the system level, uh, S-trace, whatever trace. Do you use S-trace? You do. So you are really engineering. So S trace, what else? So L S O F? What is L S O F? <laughs> it's like uh, which open files is uh, attached, right? So they are kind of the tools that I usually uh, look at this. L S O F, I O stat, M P stat. So they are quite a good tools. And also like uh, perf tools, which has a lot of information. Uh, some sort of piece that we am that so etc. And there's one website. So if you look at uh, yeah yeah even you have handful type it Dimitri. Okay K dot three dot fr 
type it and look at it, what it is. The website. This one actually um, is a person. It's a person who created this many, many years ago, but still keeping always actually very active. And I like it. Okay, so there's other kind of uh, uh, tools for system monitoring, yeah. And this one is really free to use, okay, the metric. It generates graph and also dictate what happens. So I'm going to talk about this into more greater details. And there's other kind of enterprise tools. In MySQL, we expect people know about MySQL Enterprise Monitor. Uh, I know there are many other kinds, no matter this is like yeah, enterprise company, HP, IBM, okay, or yeah, whatever out there for metrics, there are many type of monitoring tools. So look at uh, some basic information about MySQL, okay? The website, does it work? Yep, so just register this website, okay? Later on you will see a lot of good stuff from there. So here, the first thing here is talking about performance and sys schema. There is a so-called the diagnostic function. So MySQL from 5.7. So what is the current version of MySQL, the latest, latest one? What is the MySQL version? The current version, what is it? What is it? Eight, okay, so the previous one, seven? No, five, seven. It is 5.7 and now it's 8. So even this, oh, do you know what date, okay, we call GA, the first release date, okay? The first release date of MySQL 5.7, okay? What is the date? Okay, what is the year? The year of the GA date for 5.7. Do you know when? This is the first release. 1999 because 24 years. Good, okay, anyway, you remember well. I pass this to you. But uh, my question is not that, that one. <laughs> so, 5.7, what is the release date for MySQL 5.7? No, 2.1.5. 5.7 is 2.1.5. MySQL 8 is 2.1.8 in April meaning that last year in April, the MySQL 8 release, it has been in the market for one and a half years. So whatever so-called the product, we have a life cycle. No matter what, when we have a kind of product, it has to go to a life cycle, okay? Open source, there's a life cycle. It is you create one and then never end, Never end, it means nobody support, nobody actually, they are interested in it, if no life cycle, right? It just be there and then never change, means no one is interested in it. So if someone interested in it, meaning that there are changes, there are changes ongoing and the version will be up moving. So the product in Oracle has a process. A product is released. Over five years, we will schedule these products to be like going, going, going down. Okay, we call five years after GA date, and then we'll go into the extended model, and then forever model. Okay, extended three years, and then sustain forever. That means there are like eight plus more years, okay, for each product. But for the five years, it means that we are no longer we are no longer to put new things onto that 5.7, new things. 5.7's start, the release date was uh, 2015. Five years after 2015 is 2020. That means next year, two months later. <laughs> So I'm telling you something actually 5.7 is kind of going there, <laughs> right? So people look at 8.0. Why? Because there's nobody 
we try to keep an old, old, old product forever. We have 8.0 in the middle already, and it is actually people using it. When anything new, we put onto new things, not to put back to the old things, right? So that's the reason. Move up to MySQL 8.0. It is time to run 8.0. Here, I'm talking about the schema. It has been there even in 5.7, five years ago. So that means when people has problem, wow, good thing is you can run call sys.diagnostic. There is a package, there is a function. It will generate the information, internal information as a report. So do you know what is the Oracle command to run this kind of report? Do you know? Step hack? Uh oh, who, who is running Oracle? Who is Oracle DBA? Oh no, then what is the Microsoft way? <laughs> so Microsoft, how can you generate a report? What is the package? Sys SP what? Monitor, Sybase, right? So no matter what, Every product, they have a package and system service to run a report. So this is like you invoke this, it will try to generate over the time durations, one in 20, I mean two minutes, over the two minutes to gather the report at the interval of 30 seconds. So there will be delta. Start it after 30 seconds, after 30 seconds, after 30 seconds. So it captured the delta, delta, delta. And at the end, this is the, uh, the report. And we know how many IOs, how the CPU differences, what are the logs, and what are the table activities, and what are the SQL statements running, and what are the table structure actually changed. So they will be captured. And those actually important for us to know. And in particular, when we have problems, we may ask people for help. Am I correct? If you ask people to help, so, gentlemen, please help me. Then what do you say? Please help me. Then what do you say? You ask question. Am I correct? So what kind of question you ask? Please help. I have problem. And this guy just say, I have problem. Please help. And then what do you say? Uh, what are the symptoms? Right? What are the symptoms? Yeah. And then you have so many questions. Instead of giving a chance for him to speak, uh, we pass the reports to him and then you look at it first. They are actually the what database are we are running, okay, by what time, what kind of objects, what kind of SQL statement, what kind of logs. So that's the ways that we collect the information and pass to somebody. He may have basic ELISA basic information, and then we can go and talk. Without information, it's like Q&A for a week. Am I correct? So this is kind of good stuff we can actually dive into. There are things like the environments where we put this, what are the port number and version, what you use. A lot of time when we discuss and then talk to somebody to help, they will, well, what version do you use? Uh, are you running Linux or Microsoft? So you have to answer a lot of questions instead of just Q&A. This is the report, okay? Just shut the mouth up, right? It is quite important we share this, and there are also the changes regarding, so they will ask, what variables do you use? Do you set this? Do you set this? And how much memory do you use? There are a lot of things. It is all inside the report. So, and many things that happen in the database about transaction, that log or memory and how it is written. So they are actually in the InnoDB engine status. It is in the report. And it is actually across the time slide. 30 seconds, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. So it is not just one. So there are delta changes 
along the time. So along the time, the changes may indicate something, idle or activities. And there is also redundancy, the replication information. Here is none, is uh, something, but actually, this actually give information to the support of people supporting you to let you know, okay, uh, you're running the environment with not just one server, two servers, three servers, and how it works, and does it actually give some information? And there are mean some other information. What is the file I/O? How the activity? They will be shown in the report directly. So without being asked, they are like the best practice. You see, it's already put into like a script and just to run and then you can see. So from day to day, maybe this is also a good report, and then you keep track day to day, because this is not very heavy. There are heavy one, you just turn the parameters. You want a full report, or medium, or very really just very really lightweight. So basically, this can actually generate some kind of process, file, and also how memory is used. And there are more and schema information, and it tells how big the system is, how many tables, and where they put those actually things in. So they are all there. So the structure, to a certain point, the one look at those, they have the idea how big your system and what we actually we talk. Right? And there are things regarding all this, how the I.O. is not how much, it's actually the percentile, okay? The 95 percentile I.O. is on this file, okay? Then it's highlight all this like the high peak, okay, objects. And as by SQL statement and also what the latency for the threat within the server, okay? It's also highlight and by the latency with the file I.O. and also the weighting and also the index statistics, they are important for people to support and to look at it. So this is kind of another statistic. It has the idea what the report will show, the update latency, and it will tell, oh, you are kind of the feeling when the one who knows how to read this data, if you know that, Oh, that may be a table always read and the latency is too high, your I.O. may be the problematic and then they will jump into what the actually can be the solution. You can see there is also the I.O. waiting and the background and what it's actually doing and the binary is actively being written. And in many cases, MySQL, if something being actually working on the database, it has to be the we do log and do log. So many cases, they are really the top three. Log file data and thumb. Okay. In many cases, they are. So they are very important. But without this chart, you never know where to put. Maybe it is a good idea. From this, you understand the I.O. activity. It is very hot and active on some files and some specific actions. Then. What we do and make it better is, okay, I may put this specific files to somewhere else, which is SSD or some other storage, instead of right now, this is very slow. We can split the I.O. So they are the important files. And those, you can see the latency to update, okay, they are the things, it will be very, very, detail and highlight what they do. It's not by file, it's by action, by action. Talking about your activity. We are not talking about your server is just idle and you run the report. Your system is running and you run the report. And at that time, what kind of activity, mainly the latency is putting there? And what are the stress we are putting there? And then how we are solving this performance here. At least we understand and then we know what to look at. They are the key. So by default, MySQL 
has all this, a lot of details to look into it. You see? To run this diagnostic, it come up with the report. And they will show also the delta status. As what I said, at interval, 30 seconds, it will try to dig out information once. It's up to you. 120, 30, they are the parameters. So it's up to you to get the delta of 30 seconds or the delta of one minute or delta for one hour. Likely, it may be not too short or even not too long, right? It has to be targeted to yeah, your application. So here you can see the delta. You can see, oh, writing to the log file, it is like this, and memory, and also statement during this time, it is running this ABC SQL statement. So there is also other system metrics. The metrics, which talking about how many select statement, how many update, how many, there are many counter, counter in the system. So by comparing the delta, we know during that time how many transactions it runs how many select statements it runs, how many update statements it runs. So there are so many delta, counter, or even the binary log cache, and the disk, and I.O., right. Okay, all this information, they are the counter in the system. We compare the metrics, we understand, have the idea, what are the activity during your monitoring stage. So they are all there. Is this enough? Or what is so-called the best practice? So I just mentioned a kind of tools, very useful, and everybody can run because I don't use any tools. It's just the database itself, it has it. But do you know that? Do you know that? Even you running MySQL, you never try, right? Who else MySQL? Have, do you know that, diagnostic? You never. Will you try? Yes. Because it's just so simple, right? Just to run, and then the report is there. Why not? So I'm here to let you know there is something. But is this just enough? Just text. Is that good? <laughs> I don't like just text. OK? But anyway, do we have a very good practice, a best practice? There's so-called up to you. Everybody's the best practice is different because everybody has their own constraint. Anyway, so we need to look at, okay, our own. Okay, so monitoring is a must. So we have, we have to know things. Performance 101, evidence. Okay, you tell me you have problem, I don't trust. Right, you tell me it's running very, yeah, slow, I, okay, slow to you, maybe very fast to me, okay? One second to you is fast, one second to me is slow. So everybody to tell this kind of statement is, okay, we need to find the evidence. So the evidence, we have to issue some sort of report, diagnostic, and then I look at it, and what you look at it, and I look at it, okay, oh, your slow is this, oh, okay? So we have to compare and then measure what your statement is. So we don't trust, okay, every words. We, but we listen, to the, we listen to you. And then we find ways to get, your, get the evidence for what you said. So monitoring is important. So this is kind of the report. Look at the URL, it is that URL to generate all these reports. It will show this kind of activity talking about benchmarking. So sometimes performance, okay, it's like you have problem and then you fix. Benchmarking is something you have, you do not have the problem first, but you go back to the early day zero and plan, that's the benchmark. So Benchmarking is some sort of you anticipate what will happen and they're putting in the magic, your magic, and then generate the chart, and then you foresee what will happen and what you have to change. So here, there is actually talking about update online sections. So here, the section is going 
a lot, a lot, a lot. And here the activity getting a lot, a lot, a lot. Okay, but there will be yeah, more users to do update. Activity will go up, but at some point it's just settled down there. The system just to be able to run 10 is 10. It cannot run 100. It cannot be linear at all time. It has to be slowed down as per two. So when we do like performance tuning, it's an infinite loop tuning. We change something and then come back and then we change another thing. Bottlenecks is never be able to solve because bottleneck is just a movable. Is you fix this so-called bottleneck, it moves to somewhere else. You fix so-called the CPU and it will be the I.O. You fix the I.O. will be back to the CPU and all this just going around. Am I correct? Just is that enough to you and your system? Okay, the performance. So likely applications contribute the 95% area that we can fix the issues. Okay, no matter the problem is done there at the bottom, you change the way how it works, avoid it, or do it the other way, we fix the issues. Doesn't mean that yeah, we cannot actually do things, but likely contributing to the problem, 95% is just the application and the design. And the rest, we still want to look at it. At this point, we focus on the database and what we can do. So there are many tools to, con to, to work on the benchmarking. So we need some kind of tool to generate the loads. And then from there, we make sure that, okay, we understand the system behavior. So all this, you may find sysbench, dbt2, or whatever kind of the ideas, okay, generate the loading. And there is also the default MySQL, there is a MySQL slab. Do you know that, MySQL slab? No? MySQL SLAP D. So it is a D, it is a process to generate the multi-thread and generate a random SQL statement and then create data and select multi-thread and then it is a low stressing tool. But very very dummy. Very dummy. But it can actually ask you to input the SQL statement and the structure is up to you. And then it's you to provide the SQL statement. It's just thread management to run 10 threads at the same time and then when it exits, it runs again. So this is like a JMeter. <laughs> JMeter, right? So you understand that tools. So now get to another core in 10 minutes. <laughs> I finished that. Dimitri, you look at this screen. Am I correct? When you hook up, this is the screen. So this is tool, and it has a server, it has the agent. So what that means here, the server and the agent, agent is to collect the statistic from your target server. And then that will collect the data and put it back to the server and chart. So there are things in here, the presentation, that's quite a good one, okay? If you have time, you just look at it. And you go into there, and then you install. There are, you download the services, tabor, and then you do all this, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I just put it here for the sake. The slide will be yes, spreading out. And you can actually find it, and then you can do it your own. So the data collections, when it is run, so here, when this is executed, so what we do here, when this is installed, and I install as the statistic server, surface. This statistic service as the binary, I run it. So what I do is, when I collect, when this collection tool is to run, it has to connect to database and grab information. It connect to database, it also collect the system data. System data, CPU, and all this like mutex and kernel parameters. So this is like CPU, all this, it collect data, not just my SQL. But if I need to connect to MySQL, I need to provide the connection detail. Where this is like once installed, we need to put in, edit the doc environment MySQL, and then change the connection, and use the name password so it connects to it, and then grab the information back. So once they install, and then you have this, and you can actually turn this on, and you can run. So the, to run it, it is quite easy, okay? So there is just run a single command, easy collect. It's really easy step, easy. 
Okay, there are many commands, but there is one very easy way, and the command is easy. Start with easy, E-A-S-Y. So you look at it and you will see that it's a collection of collection, a collection of collection tools. So once we have all this, so right here, you see, this here to test, 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 test. At the end, there is EC step. You see, EC. So the first, just an example. I want to collect the meal tax information. I want to collect uh, InnoDB. I want to collect my SQL. There are many, there are many tools, shell script right there. Okay, but I don't care. I mean, I don't care. I run EC step. The easy step will collect all this data, and this data will be just be there, and it will be sipped because the data will be a lot, and this tool will collect, 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 and by time it will sip it up one file. By time, sip it up because tax is very complexable. Tax very complexable, so it will do this job, and once we have this, we can go back because the file is sipped. A lot of many zip because many times dump zip. We go back and then comes to the server, and this is like a just a environment as what I said. I put the connection. I need to change, and they are the binary, right? So this is the tool, and I run this tools and easy step and put where I put the data collection data and for how long and ten out. So for ten seconds every time and running for one hour. This is so simple. Install, run, data is back. Oh, data is back, no tools to visualize that useless. So visualizations. Install, so a process to install is here and download. So from here to download from here and the servers will be just to run. So it's just install script, install.sh, right? You get the tar, tar file, install.sh in there. Install. Once installed, it's all there and then package it and then you have to put in parameters. And after all this install at the end, uh, so whatever it is, start very first time. To start very first time, you see right here, there is dim start here and then admin start force. Just only the first time to start this. And later on, you just start. Okay, the first time is start force and then you just start. Very first time after install, actually the instruction is there. When you install last statement, so it tells you. So once you get this, the server is up, and you have to browser and connect to your port number on your server. Okay, you just find another VM and then install it, and you have this page. And go into the home page, main page, welcome. Welcome. And you will get into a page and those all the charts will come in, okay? But how do we do this? Welcome, and then you get into this page, okay? But the data, we have the data. But before we have the data, we have to create repositories to load the data into that repository. It is in here. So we put this analyze. But analyze to do this, first to analyze. So here to generate the chart, we will analyze and come into here we select the corresponding data and choose multi-host as an example, multi-host, and then put in, and it will choose all this coming up, and I will choose, okay, all the data and select one of those. Okay, but where those data? I haven't uploaded the data. This is, I go to the end, and I will come back and then show you how we generate the entry in here so you can choose. Suppose at this point, you do not have data. Okay, if the data is back, I upload and you see entries. So what that is, and then you upload, and you will see all this, and then go, I will see all the chart, and a lot, many charts will be there. It will be all the charts. Okay, so what, how we do this, collect the data, we hit preferences. Actually, we need to hit the preferences, and create a new database because this is a data set. We create a database to load the data into this data set and create this 
and we put it into my ICM or InnoDB. So I change this to InnoDB, and once we do this, at the end, okay, that preference done. That preference is done. We have the files. We get back the files in here, and the files in here, and what we do, what we do in here is from we have all this zip file. G Z unzip the file. <laughs> okay. So we need to unzip all the file. It's a big files, many big files. And we need to change. Okay. In the folder there is a file called what is the file name? Load data SH. So the zip file and in the folder there's one file called load SH. Go into it and change and change the name which I create the database. Create and you put a name. So that's the base and put the name. So once we put a name right there, and then the title is just so sh to, sh to be shown on the screen by the line. And then once we have all this, we execute this. And then execute and back to then you can choose. And the graph will be there. So easy. And very buildable. And all the CPU chart, in ODB memory, all there. And then if you have chart and then you can compare, you have the idea what happened. And all the logs, all the information is that it's not just text, it's graph and charts. Okay, so uh, any questions? Yes? Any questions? Hello. Um, so, um, if you look at the like a uh, um, system function or system variable, so it's mean like uh, uh, is we can use this after after something wrong happen, right? So uh, we are going. So when something wrong happen, like uh, uh, the the CPU is consume a lot of um, uh, like a resources or the, the the memory is full or something like that. So and then we 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 we. We come to the system variable to see what what happened. Right. So, it, it, is there any like a system variable or system function that that can uh, monitor, and then we can test like a uh, the threshold um, when something wrong uh, when something is going to reach the threshold, and then it's going to uh, to notify or, or or do anything back to the system admin or inform the or the system admin. Thank you. So this is like a preventive measure. So one of the thing is like as what you said is like the postmortem. What what is uh, the end results coming up and people complain? Then we put the action in. But the other way is you are talking about best practice. Okay. So uh, things like uh, threshold. You prevent people from changes to even higher values or actually like. The SQL statement is running too long, so you actually we, ha we have to proactively to tell there's something wrong. So what we talk about this uh, from the commercial point, we have the tools. We call this. Did we talk about my SQL Enterprise Monitor? There is the Enterprise Monitor in the first part of this. Uh, yeah, in the first talk, Enterprise Monitor is the commercial. Package. I mean, when we have you inst you subscribe my SQL commercial version, there is backup, there is a security concern, there is also manageability monitor. The monitor has the features we call advisor. Advisor, we have over 250, 250 more advisors in this in the monitors. What those actually are. They are the like jobs and tasks and the scheduler, which to run on schedule to check parameters or configuration, like password for the security, like specific variable which you specify but should not be, 
So they are all this kind of like preventive measure. We call this advisor or best practice. Okay, we implement in the monitor, and this is. I hope this actually the tools, which you may look at it. Any second question? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay, if I am using MySQL version 5.7 and I want to make it to version 8, do I can upgrade it right away or use something break? Thank you. So, how to upgrade? Who has, who has done any, who has experience to upgrade? You. Long time ago. Do you upgrade Microsoft? Do you upgrade Linux? Yes. Do you upgrade Oracle? Do you upgrade any like uh, Firefox? What do you do? <laughs> Click the button. Yeah. Just take the action, right? So the most important, you take the action. Without taking action, it's not changed. So how do we do upgrade, right? Your, your question, how? Okay, the reason is that uh, take, uh, take this as an example. My company is using version 5.6 for a really long time and they insist on not upgrading to version 8. So they might have their reason for that. So I think maybe it's maybe some reason that upgrade to version 8 might not compatible with the old version. Like, look, look at just the PHP example. PHP 7 is not compatible with PHP 5 or something like that. That's all, exactly. So have you done upgrade? So in many cases when we do upgrade, there's for sure a risk. For sure there's a risk. You upgrade and then you, it fail. And my SQL is very generous. Uh, many times upgrade is just work. Many times it's just work. And if you try to make a guess why people not to upgrade, many reasons is, to me, eh, when I look at it, many reasons just very simple. Just we do not want to move anywhere because we don't need to move because things just work. Why move instead of, instead of talking about move to this and there's problem? They haven't tried yet. <laughs> they haven't tried yet. How do they know there's a risk or there's a problem? Only when the time they actually, the problem happened, then we actually stick to what happened. The first errors, usually in the egg console, is the connection. The connection is the problem. Okay, usually when those problems from security. Because security cannot be generous. Security, we enforce the security and means some has to be changed in certain way. MySQL 8, we change the way to enforce a security. But we can turn this off. But we have to make sure that you are well aware of the security enforcement. So by having to upgrade the first time and the client with the old version, usually when we upgrade just the server, the client also needs to upgrade something. If it is JDB driver or whatever driver to connect, there's something, but nobody care and connect. And this one is old to connect to new. So the security may, br may break. So that's actually one point. There are many other things. Maybe the parameters, we put up something. But in many cases, they are not a concern. 99% there are no concern. But the connection, security part is the first part. Thank you. And if I may actually add to that, because I see this happening very often. Okay. Um, so the first thing is that uh, when you develop applications, you always need to write your applications with tests, with automated tests, right? 
So that is the only way that you know that your application actually works under all circumstances. Uh, if you don't write your tests, um, basically the reason you call it software is because it's easy to change. If it's no longer easy to change, it's hardware. And the only way that you can maintain it as being software is to uh, use practices like TDD or having a whole suite of automated tests, right? Um, the second thing uh, which I always recommend pe uh, uh, people do when they write the application is uh, pe people have this tendency of uh, making this huge ball of code where you, you stuff in all your business logic, your view logic, your, uh, your database connection logic, everything into just one little PHP file. Right, or uh, one huge PHP file. So, uh, what I always say is that the the part of your file. Okay, so let me put it this way. Okay, when you do your file reads and writes, do you actually worry whether your hard disk is a SATA or a or SSD or uh, or anything else? No. The reason for that is because there's a file access layer that handles. All and the file access layer and the driver that handles all the particular of your hard disk. So in the same way, when you write your applications, you need you always need to abstract away your data access layers, right? And to make sure that that is independent from the rest of your code. This way, while you're working on the top part, the business logic, someone else can be working on the on the access layer and testing it against the new version of MySQL. That is very important. Yes. Thank you. Sorry, my two cents. Thanks, Maris. This is a very good, uh, yeah, yeah, questions, and yeah, we always face this one when we work with customer, and for the initial deployments, we always ask people to upgrade during the testing phase. Usually, when we start a project, there is ongoing, and there will be another release, and some sort of actually during the process people start to stick to one version and never move. But during this process, we put in place a so-called upgrade process. Then, after this deployments, they have seen that. They have tested the upgrade, and in the testing or the early stage, they will see upgrades plausible. Otherwise, when they see upgrade them, they will, wow, they are faced to do anything. They stop to move. So build this upgrade process into the plan at the very early stage. This will be very flexible for the upcoming project or actual deployment. OK, so I think time is up. All right, well, uh, thank you very much, Ivan and Ryan. Please give them a hand. Uh, will you guys be at the dinner tonight? At the social dinner? Pardon? We have plans to go, right? To we have plans. Okay, okay, no worries. All right, well, thank you, uh, everyone, for coming, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the session. Uh, hopefully, we will uh, see you tomorrow for another exciting day of Open Tech Summit Thailand. Thank you very much. <laughs>